brought to you by Baldwin Heating and Plumbing, 515-371-436. Now here's the host of Faith Works Live, Michael Damascus. Unwavering customer service, dedicated commitment to excellence, and one of the most professional and technically proficient heating and cooling companies in the Des Moines metro area, Baldwin Heating and Plumbing, sets themselves apart by caring about their customers' needs and raising the bar of keeping customers satisfied. Balden Heating and Plumbing, they are there and here right now for you. It's a transition we're going through. Temperatures are rising. Temperatures are getting cold again. Whatever it takes, they'll help you be ready for whatever weather we've got. Call them right now, 515-371-4036. That's 515-371-4036. 36. I also want to tell you about Obria Medical Clinics of Iowa. They provide life-affirming, Christ-centered, holistic medical care for women. They've got six locations across our state in Iowa City, Ames, Des Moines, Burlington, and Fort Dodge. This is a group that you can rely on for help for women. They, they, re, they specialize in superior unplanned pregnancy care and reproductive health, comprehensive STD testing and treatment for women and men. Check them out at obria.org. That's O-B-R-I-A dot O-R-G. Like them on Facebook. Follow them on Instagram, Obria Medical Clinics of Iowa. My name is Mike Damastis. I am the host here on FaithWorks Live, and it's Thursday, Theology Thursday, but we've got kind of a different spin. Josh Bingaman, director of Harvest Bible Institute, is here in the studio with me, and uh, I'm really honored that you have tuned in to 99.3 FM, The Truth. Uh, Josh, we have a, a, a guest on uh, the phone with us today, a, a special guest, and I'm really glad that he's here. Mark Sargent uh, hails from Colorado. Mark Sargent uh, is joining us today because he's going to kind of be bringing a different position. He is a proponent of flat earth. That, flat earth. That our earth is not this round sphere. It is a flat disk. And I, I want to give Mark uh, all the opportunity that he can to kind of explain that. Uh, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today on Faith Works Live. Hey, thanks very much for having me, guys. Absolutely. Now, uh, I read a little bit about you, Mark. You were a pro gamer, a professional gamer. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day when there were no professional gamers, I was actually... Dude, that's... Yeah. You getting pl- paid to play video games? Nice. Yeah, that's... yeah. The, back, back in the 90s, there were some ringers that were hired because the games weren't that great, and so we were hired to make the games look better than they were. And so I, <laughs> I got to travel around the country with a software company doing this. It was kind of fun. If... If anything could call me away from the ministry, <laughs> I, I could I could hear the Lord's call clearly if, if that happened. Amen. So, uh, anyways, that's a pretty cool gig. Yeah. But in 2014, right. it uh, I, I saw that you kind of started researching this idea that the Earth might be flat, and and from what I understand, you kind of researched it in the genre of I don't believe this at all. I don't buy into it for a second. Yeah, but. You kind of got convinced by the things that you were looking into. Yeah, yeah. In in 2014, I had looked about, at about any, every conspiracy you could think of. If you're in the tech field long enough, and I'm older, so I was there when the internet was started, and uh, I thought I'd pretty much finished the internet when it came to conspiracies. And everybody knows about Flat Earth, everybody's heard about it, and everybody thinks it's a piece of trash. And I thought, well, okay, it's on my bucket list. I might as well just look at this thing. I'll knock it out in a weekend and have my opinion on it, which will undoubtedly be negative. Fast forward to about nine months later, the beginning of 2015, and I'm breaking my keyboard over my head going, okay, why can't I prove the globe in a court of law anymore? Why can't I do it? I mean, I I consider myself a very clever problem solver. So I made a series of, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to make a series of videos. I'm going to put it out to the internet. I'm going to put all my contact information out there, my phone number, my address, my bank records, my social security. No, not that stuff, but enough of it. (laughs) And, and I, okay, internet hive mind, you're much more intelligent than me. Tell me where I went wrong because I can't prove the globe anymore. And thought I would then just waited for the other shoe to drop and it didn't to where uh, subject matter experts were calling me from all branches of the military and pilots and engineers. Uh, the media was calling me asking me what the heck is going on and the general people I mean, my phone the phone's even ringing now uh, the phone never stopped ringing and here we are four years later conventions and a documentary and a book and a radio show and all of it unsolicited so there you are. 
help me help me understand. Right. How did you come to this conclusion? And and explain to me if you can just in a in a quick synopsis right. the idea. Okay, what we're what we're talking about here is mainstream science, which we all know and love, tells us that we're on this tiny little rock that's covered with a thin sheen of water, which is then covered by a wisp of smoky material, otherwise known as our atmosphere. And you're flying through this impossible universe in five different directions and five different velocities, and you, you're nothing. You, you mean nothing. You're, you're an insignificant accident in the universe. Where the Flat Earth community, which is made up of at least, at least in the United States, uh, I can't speak for the other countries necessarily, uh, in the United States, it's at least half of us are, are hardcore Christians. Uh, believe that we're living in a building, a structure with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and uh, that our best and brightest couldn't figure it out, didn't figure it out until about 1960. We just didn't have the technology to figure it out. And when we did, we kept the whole thing a big secret. We, you know, we didn't build it, obviously. It was built by someone or something that's much, much more powerful and older than us. And what we're talking, you know, if you want the visual to it, uh, look at the UN flag. You're, you're talking about a, um, a snow globe, a terrarium, a planetarium, where it's a flat surface, uh, kind of like a dinner plate, where the North Pole's at the center, the continents are spread around organically around the outside of it, and then Antarctica is not this island continent, it's spread around the entire thing, like this giant ice continent that protects, that keeps the, all the water in. And then that whole thing is shielded by a giant dome that's made out of something, uh, called, so otherwise known- Like a snow globe? I mean, like, you know, like, what? Yes. like a snow globe? Somebody very, very much, and... yeah, very much like a snow globe. And the dome in, in, in your vernacular, and look, I was raised born again Christian, uh, would be called the firmament from Genesis, and we can go into chapter and verse if you want. I'm I'm pretty pretty well versed in that, uh, but yeah, that's that's what it looks like. And again, our best and brightest could not figure it out uh, because it was so big that we couldn't. We had to make sure we could get out to the outer edge and the upper edge. You remember, NASA is not that old, and when they figured it out, it's like, yeah, we're we're not going to tell anybody for a while on this thing because it's too big. They'd been beating people over the heads with textbooks for the last five centuries. And it would undermine the entire foundation of science. Sorry. That's okay. My, that's so, my short all right. Um, that's that's the view in particular. Now, there are from depending on who you talk to. I mean, there flat earthers don't all accept universal ideas. I mean, there are some ideas that uh, are universal across the board. Not everybody accepts this dome idea. Right. Um, you know, so that's that's unique. I would say maybe to you, but it's it's. A, I would say a lot of folks hold that, but there are other variants of this view as well right, correct right. yeah yeah it's about it's it's interesting you would say that because once you get into flat earth it, the the cosmology it kind of opens wide up and so let's say we'll use round numbers say 70 percent of the pop of the of the group believes in some sort of dome mostly because of the atmosphere the, the problem between the vacuum of space and the atmosphere uh 30 percent don't though 30 believe that it's just this flat infinite plane but it's like uh you guys still got to deal with the atmosphere problem uh and then as far as are there other continents beyond this are there other puddles in the middle of this endless plane what you know what exact how exactly are the continents laid out uh, yeah you're right there's a lot of different camps i kind of equate it to the uh, the clans of the scottish highlands which is, yeah, they, they don't agree a lot with each other and they'll, they'll take swings at each other all day long. But at the end of the day, they still agree on one thing, and that is they hate the English. And in our, at the end of our day, we can agree on one thing, which is we hate the globe. No one can go back to the globe. We have a 99% retention rate, and that's not an exaggeration. Uh, okay. So, so, go ahead. So let me, let me ask you a few questions then. Sure. Um, and, uh, and I want to get into some of my just trying to wrap my head around this. Why would you believe this? All that kind of stuff. Right. Because uh, it's, it, like you said, I mean, it's a, goes against every, but you guys hold this view yeah. where, I mean, you're persecuted for these views and people mock you. Oh, and yeah. It's like, it's, why, it, did, why would you believe something that, that brings so much animosity towards you? Because we, it's really, it's, it's different from just about any other conspiracy. Because, I, in fact, I can't get mad at people that mock me because I used to be them. And, and anyone that's listening is like, look, I used to be you. I don't, I would absolutely, five years ago, if you would have come at me and say, oh yeah, by the way, you're going to be touring in different countries and doing public speaking engagements on flat earth and getting paid for it. I'd be like, get out of here. You're not serious. 
Uh, but but that's just it. We everybody starts out hating flat Earth. Everybody tries to debunk it. The T-shirt literally reads, "I became a flat Earther because I tried to disprove it." That's the trap. It's like the La Brea tar pits. Once you once you put your arm in, you know, trying to save whoever's in there, you're you're done. You're you're going in probably unless you've got a, a master's degree uh, in some sort of physical science, or you've got a lot of family members in the aerospace industry, which does happen. But yeah, we, persecution is there. Uh, the YouTube comment section is brutal. <laughs> they, it is painful. In fact, I, I encourage people, anyone that makes a YouTube channel in Flat Earth, not to read the YouTube comment section if you want to sleep at night. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I'm again, I'm not a proponent of Flat Earth. You are. We're, li- we're talking to Mark Sargent, and he is definitely uh, a solid believer on this, that he is sold out and... He, he's committed to this idea, and, uh, and I think you would maybe describe yourself even as an evangelist for this point of view, would you, would you not? I absolutely would. I don't know if I'd use the word committed, because uh, you get that whole mental institution thing. <laughs> I, 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 I'd, I'd, say, I'd say dedicated, but yeah, we there use, we use a lot of religious terms, you know, leaps of faith, evangelical, preaching the word, uh, uh, you know, teach, you know, saying things like their gospel. I mean, yeah, right. there's, there's a lot of religious similarities in Flat Earth, which is one of the reasons why Flat Earth tends to bring... I've talked to many people in the Christian community. They say they've never seen a tool like this bring so many people back to spirituality, me included. I mean, I was... Now, Mark, a, uh, go, go you mentioned that you were raised a Christian. Yes. Uh, do you consider yourself a Christian today? Oh, yes, absolutely, I do. Uh, and and I know that there are a lot of people that they start with, like, Scripture to lead to Flat Earth. Was it science or was it Scripture, or how do you see that? It was, a, it was a little bit of both because I, I was kind of a weird hybrid. You know, I grew up, you know, again, with an evangelical church, uh, went to Camp Malibu. Church was not just a Sunday thing, definitely. But when I got to university and then the tech field, you know, if you get too far into tech, religious is, religion goes out the window. But mm-hmm. when I got into this, here's the reason why, uh, and a lot of people say the same thing, is, is if the default shape of the world changes from a globe to something that doesn't seem very organic at all, seems like it was, it was made, it was created, well, there you go. I mean, if it was created, then there was a creator, and then you're, you're in a tough, tough place. It's like, okay, it's either one of, only one of two things. It's either an advanced civilization that's much more powerful than yourself or, a, uh, or the divine. Let me jump in, Mark. Uh, th- we're talking with Mark Sargent. We're talking about a flat earth. If you've got questions, now's the time to ask them. Call us, 515-727-5842. We'd love to hear from you. This is Faith Works Live, brought to you by Baldwin Heating and Plumbing. 515-371-4036. Now here's the host of Faith Works Live, Michael Damascus. I know you care about your health, and because of that, you care about the things that you eat. And Onimus Beef brings you not only nutrition, but excellent value because you don't just care about your health. You care about your money as well, and Onimus Beef is going to give you both. They're going to give you better health and better value. So why don't you order your beef today by calling the farmer David Onimus himself at 515-238-7505. That's 515-238-7505. My name's Mike Damastis, and I'm the host here on FaithWorks Live, and I am so honored you've tuned in to 99.3 FM, The Truth. And we have just a, a very interesting guest, Josh and I do today. We're, we're talking with Mark Sargent. Uh, he's from Colorado. Mark is a, a well-known proponent of the Flat Earth Theory. Uh, Mark, just real quick, I want to ask you a quick question, yeah. and that is... Uh, do you consider this because you, you you said you're a believer and you do you consider this a doctrine of salvation? I mean, is this I've got to believe that the earth is flat if I'm going to be a true Christian? I do, and and that's by the way that's the first wow. time I, that's the first time out of all the interviews that I've done and I've done a lot uh, that anyone's ever asked me that, but it's but it's true, uh, and that is I I one of my friends uh, in this his name is Rob Skiba. And he created a website called uh, testingtheglobe.com, and he did it strictly from a a Christian standpoint where he went through with a fine-tooth comb every chapter and verse. And he said, look, other than Isaiah 40.22, which says, uh, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth, other than that verse, 
nothing else. He goes, it is a flat earth book. He goes, uh, in Isaiah 40, 22, I mean, remember in the ancient Hebrew, see, uh, circle is not ball, it's not sphere, it's not globe, it's circle. Well, a dinner plate can be circular, your dining room table, a hubcap. Everything else that I have yeah. seen in the book, and and trust me, I've I've I have remembered. I had to to dig back in more into uh, biblical scripture so much because of this, and that should should be the testament alone to to how strong this thing is. Which is I don't know. Let's just rattle off a couple of them. Uh, the the story of Joshua, how Joshua asked to God to keep the sun and the moon in the sky or the sun and sky for an extra day so he could slay more enemies right? Way easier to do on an enclosed system. Or one of my favorites, the Tower of Babel from Genesis, which is, look, if the mm -hmm. Tower of Babel is a bridge to heaven. You know, it's a, it's a building, a structure that goes straight up to God. Where is that going on a spinning ball that's spinning at a thousand miles an hour and orbiting the earth at 60,000 miles an hour and so on and so on? That, that building is going all sorts of different directions. If it's, if it's a globe, but if it's a, if it's a snow globe, it's only going to one place. It's fixed and stationary. Sorry, I ramble. This is what I do. No, that's okay, and I appreciate that, Mark. I want to take a second to go to one of our callers, Stephen. Uh, I appreciate you calling in, and uh, also want to say thank you because you helped get me uh, connected uh, with Mark for today's topic. Um, I uh, I want to tell you just in advance because I know how much you care about this subject. I want to just say keep it brief. But what do, what do you got for us today? Hello. I don't hear. I don't hear. Are you Are you there, Stephen? Okay, we we must have lost Stephen. So, uh, we'll go uh, we'll go back uh, to our, our conversation with oh, Mark. Oh no worries. I, uh, no worries. I uh, I appreciate it. And so, Mark, I've um, I've still got issues. I really wondered about that. I wondered, you know, with the last question I asked you, if um, if you consider this to be, you know, I just don't believe. So, in essence, I mean, to say it maybe in a more harsh way, you don't believe you're really saved. No, yeah. well, okay. Let, let me not listen. Let me not take it that far because we're we're really okay. delving into, wow, for lack of a better term, newly rediscovered uncharted territory. Meaning, I mean, there's a lot of all we know from the from the spiritual side of things. You know, of all the all the Christians that I've talked to, I mean, there's there's a whole nother like not only are there flat Earth conferences, there are Christian flat Earth conferences. Uh, the last the one they did last year was called Skyfall. And what all they know for sure is that it is in, is energizing and creating a whole lot of enthusiasm in the Christian community. And there are lines that are starting to be drawn there, but I would not, I, I'm not going to go out there and say, no, 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 if you don't believe this and this and this, you're not saved. I'm saying that it could lead you in a direction where uh, if you had, if you were, if you were feeling down, if you were feeling fatigued about the word, if you, you know, if you weren't just pumped up about anything, this will, this will pump you up. I, I've seen it too many times where it's like, I, I don't want to give out percentages that, that don't make any sense, but let's say you were 90% energetic about, uh, about the scripture. This will take you to 97%. No question. Mm -hmm. If you, if you look at it close enough, uh, but but again, if you don't, that's fine. I mean, there's people, uh, what I try to tell people, I'll tell you this, but even though I know we've got a couple segments left, which is usually I end with this, but um, I got to get it out there, which is I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. All I'm here is to put the seed in your head and say, look, don't, don't take my word for it. Uh, do your own research and ask questions. And if you get to the same place I do, fantastic. Just, you know, just know that you're in for heck of a journey. Sure. We're talking with Mark Sargent. He is a uh, nationally known proponent for uh, the flat earth uh, philosophy, worldview, however you want to describe it. Yeah. And, uh, and I appreciate you taking time to talk with us today. I've got, I've got a few questions. Of course. A few challenging, for me at least, you know, how could I get past some of these things? Right, right, right. How, how, these are not like I didn't Google these. These are just things that I, when I thought about this, these are things that I wondered about myself sure. one of them would be the the what i would consider a problem with the moon the moon got it and the phases of the moon oh that's... and how you have these obvious you 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 see the moon and you know what appears to be at least with the light right a sphere right. uh on on the moon and um so just address that real quick sure sure uh the moon and i know this dates me again because i'm older uh, but if anyone anyone goes to a planetarium, you know, we've had planetariums around since the 1970s, as far as I know. Uh, when you look up in a planetarium, we can create the moon and we can create the, the waxing and waning crescents and all the, the fun phases of the moon. 
The question is, can you land on that moon inside the planetarium? No, you cannot. But it looks real. Yes, it does. And, and you say, well, yeah, but you're just looking up on a ceiling. And I'm saying, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying when you walk out of that planetarium, who's to say you're not in a just a much, much bigger planetarium? Which is why I use the, the Truman Show as a great reference. I mean, technically, we have the engineering capability to make a 20-mile-wide planetarium. And inside that planetarium, you could convince people that whatever's up there in the sky is absolutely real. Uh, we have that technology now to do it. Imagine what God could do or a, a civilization. If you don't, you know, if you're not believing in God, and I know most of your listeners are. And it, w imagine what we could do if we had another 500 years or a thousand years. Remember, we've only had so, HD television for 20 years. So, so Mark, not hard at all for the moon. Sorry, go ahead. The moon is a sphere and other planets are a sphere. No. No, not at all. They're just lights. No, in the... so you don't do the sun. None of it. There are no spheres in, in well, space or whatever. Yeah, li... Okay. Circular and sphere, two different things. But as far as the sure. planets, the planets and the stars, no, the planets and the stars are just lights in the sky. The sun and the moon are much, much bigger, which leads me to a whole other thing, which is they have to be much, much smaller and much, much closer. So in our cosmology, the sun isn't 400,000 miles wide. It's 50 miles wide, but it's, it's not 93 million miles away either. It's really, really close. Maybe even 3,000 miles away, like a mobile hanging above a child's crib. And the sun is an incandescent light bulb which generates heat, no, no doubt. But the moon, you want to look into some weird stuff, look into the moon. The moon generates a cold light. And by that, I mean like from a, 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 a university standpoint, a cold laser, which means uh, real, real quick, which is we all know that it's 90 degrees in the sunlight. It's 80 degrees. Oh, we're going to music. Sorry. All right. I got to I got to jump in. I'm sorry. We're going to a hard break. <laughs> no but worries. We're talking with Mark Sargent and he's a proponent of a flat earth i would love to hear from you 515-727-5842 this is faith works live brought to you by baldwin heating and plumbing 515-371-4036 now here's the host of faith works live michael damascus we are so blessed right here in Des Moines, Iowa, to have Harvest Bible Institute in our backyard where they train up people for ministry to know more about the Word of God and God's call on their lives. Tell me what's going on in Harvest right now, Josh. That's right. We're a college right here in Des Moines that seeks to help you grow in your biblical knowledge and your experience with the Lord. Maybe you want to be in church leadership. Maybe you want to pursue something more than where you're currently at. We provide an opportunity for you to do the, just that. We have qualified professors in our classrooms. We have regular settings at an affordable price that can help you get to the next level. We cover all the different topics, not just theological stuff, although that's a lot of fun, but we also cover practical issues. And in so many ways, they're a great opportunity for you who are just looking to grow or you who want to step into ministry that Harvest Bible Institute can be your place. So if you want to check it out and learn more, go to harvestbibleinstitute.us and send us a message. We'd love to talk with you. Our next semester starts in the fall. That's harvestbibleinstitute.us. Harvestbibleinstitute.us. My name is Mike Damastis, and I am so glad that you have joined us today on 99.3 FM, The Truth. We're, this is Faith Works Live that you're listening to. we got a great guest on with us today, Mark Sargent, who is a nationally known proponent for uh, flat Earth, and uh, for for our Earth, where we live, this place is is flat. And um, you might have thought that that's uh, something we were able to deal with a long time ago, but there are a lot. And I mean, as I kind of just researched this on the internet, this is a very big movement. This is not a little thing. There's a lot of people yeah. that embrace this philosophy. Is, is that not true, Mark? Absolutely. And the reason uh, it is so, it, it's spreading so fast and the numbers are, are beyond what I even thought they would, would ever be. The reason why it's grown so quickly is because for the first time, and you're going to have to blame social media on this, we have created a model, a world model that's easier to explain than the globe. And by that, I'm just, the short version is flat earth is now easier to, to explain to somebody on the street than the globe. And is something that we have learned, you know, throughout history, which is people, the, the, the Chinese book, um, uh, Sun Tzu, The Art of War, says uh, that people p follow the path of least resistance. They're like water, which is the short version of saying that people are lazy. And that's what we run into. It's like, look, if, if the flat earth explanation is now easier to understand than all the geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum mechanics of the heliocentric model, 
What do you think they're going to do? They And we throw in some images to boot. They're going with us. The demographics do not lie. If anyone has any doubt, look up. I, know, I don't want to take up too much time there. Uh, look up the u.gov survey, which was done by a British research team out of uh, London. where And they're a scientific. We didn't hire them. They polled 10,000 Americans. And the one group that really stuck out to them was the 18 to 24-year-olds, which was a third of them in the United States. We're already not believing in the globe anymore. I thought that was fascinating. So back when Columbus right. was on the scene, Spain had a motto right. uh, at the time. The, the motto in Latin was ne plus ultra, okay. which literally meant no more beyond, because a lot of people in Spain believed that the earth was flat right. and there was nothing beyond Spain. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can go to the base of Columbus's statue today and you can see uh, at the base of that, that, that phrase, that Latin phrase, ne plus ultra, but there's a lion eating the ne. Mm. Literally, there is more beyond because he proved there's more beyond. So That's cool. um, your idea is kind of in line with that kind of thinking. There's really, you know, there's no more beyond kind of like the, that circular realm of right. ice, right? right? And every culture believed in this at one point. I know there's people out saying, no, the Greeks, it's the Greeks. It's like, no, no, forget about the freaking Greeks. Every And I can just rattle off a few. They all drew the same thing. If you're old enough to remember the Close, Close Encounters of the Third Kind movie where everybody drew Devil's Tower and they couldn't figure out why, everybody was drawing a snow globe back then. I mean, the Navajo, the Babylonians, the Mesas, Japanese, Persian, Viking, Indian, Mayan, Incan, Hebrew, Chinese, Celtic, Africa, it goes on and on and on. I've got a sheet in front of me that's as long as your arm. And they all drew the same thing. And only about 500 years ago, that's when it changed. That's when the Copernican model was introduced and the heliocentric model. And it's not only is it an Earth, it's a globe, but it's a solar system and the sun's at the center. And we're in this vast universe and there's all these other things. It's like, so what? Was Go ahead. Copernicus part of the beginning of the conspiracy to make the Earth a globe? I don't know if Copernicus was, because remember, he didn't even allow his, his stuff to be released until after he died. That was one of those things. It's like, don't do anything with my materials until at least a decade after I'm dead. So the question is, and, and people will say, okay, you, because I know you're going to ask this eventually, and that is, are you saying that God is deceiving us? If God actually built a snow globe, is he deceiving us? I'm going, no, I don't see it as a deception. I see it as a test. Which is, I think every civilization, given enough technology or given, you know, as they grow bigger and more advanced, have the opportunity to discover where they live. And I think that's uh, that's part of the journey that we're all on. And uh, but yes, it did start with Copernicus back then. OK, so uh, let me ask you another problem that I have. Yeah. This is one of the one of the problems I have. Uh, and that is when a lunar eclipse occurs. Right. You see the shadow of the Earth on the moon. Right. And it's round. It is round. Why? Why so, is it round? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, just, well, I mean, it could. It doesn't, that, it doesn't have to be a. It doesn't have to be a sphere to make it round. But that's a great sure. question that you brought up. Okay. Because you you saw the documentary I'm gathering, and so you knew that I was at the the blackout zone in the eclipse. What was interesting, and they did not talk about. They You're talking about the documentary on Netflix. Yeah, the documentary on Netflix uh, behind the curve. Where they they follow they they actually take took me down there to Salem, Oregon to to watch the blackout sound. Now here's the inter what's interesting, and they did not talk about this in the documentary. They left so much stuff out. You got to remember the director of that documentary hated flat Earth by the time he got to the end of it. He hated it oh so much. But the what was interesting is the blackout zone is only seventy miles wide. Forget about if it's a circle or not. Why is it only seventy miles wide? You remember the moon, if you believe mainstream science, is two thousand miles wide. So how does the shadow get shrunk down to seventy miles? That's like you walking next to a building in the sunlight, and your shadow gets shrunken down to the size of an action figure, size of an army man. And that where where do we find that in real life? And you're saying, whoa, it's the optics, and that's how it gets shrunk down. Science has an explanation. I'll go, okay, fine. Let's do the other way, the, the blood moon eclipse, which is when the earth is in front of the sun and the moon is on the other side. Well, if the earth is 8,000 miles wide, which is four times larger, the blackout zone, remember the same distance, blackout zone, zone should be four times as large. We should see a 250 mile wide blackout zone on the moon. The moon should look not just red, it should look like a bloodshot eye with a big black pupil in the center. We never so ever have, see that. I have a question because I was under the impression that, that most flat earthers didn't believe that the sun actually went behind the earth. 
that it just rotates in kind of a, a circle above us. Oh no, no, you're you're absolutely right. I'm just saying I'm 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 just using the mainstream science example, which is so. It, how does an eclipse appear on the moon if the sun is never on the other side of the earth? Uh, that you shade the moon red. This is all you do. I mean, it's again, you can do a blood. In fact, we do blood moons in planetariums. They are not hard to do. And I'm not trying to be insulting in any way, shape or form. You just got to understand that what you're looking at up there is just a projection. It's all it is. It's just a, a, a movie on a screen. It's just technology. We can put, we can make a blood moon in a planetarium in two seconds. The only thing that's tougher to do is the sun because it generates so many lumens. It's so freaking bright. But nowadays with OLED technology, we can generate a, a simulated sun. Uh, look up a company called Colux. They can make a, a skylight you can put in any room right now that has a sun and a blue sky behind it that is absolutely identical so to the real thing i'm having a little trouble understanding. are you saying that the moon isn't real like it's there like this is just a conspiracy like deception or something no i'm not saying the moon isn't real i'm just saying that it's not 2,000 miles wide i'm saying it's very very small and you probably can't land on it i mean it's probably mechanical in nature but then again if we're talking about god it's probably spiritual in nature but yeah it's it's not the moon sorry let me back up real quick the, no no americans have ever landed on the moon ever ever okay. ever 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 <laughs> All right, so let me. I got to slow down, Mark. Sorry. You're just getting so much at me. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Having a hard time following. Um, so you said several things that I'm really having a hard time with. What? It's like you you say things and they're like explosive in terms of you know popular theory or, or belief. The, you're saying the sun's about 50 miles away. No, no, not 50 miles away. Maybe 3,000. Okay, slow. I'll slow down. The sun and the moon are are pretty much identical in size, which is, by the way, how you, the, the moon can fit so coincidentally just in front of the sun. They say, well, it's 400 times uh, as narrow as the sun, but it's also 400 times closer than the sun. So the sun and the moon are a rough, rough, let's say, between 30 and 50 miles wide. Uh, and they're roughly in the same trajectory, although they move kind of like a, a needle on a record player. I know that also dates me. Uh, but they're maybe, I don't know, anywhere from 600 miles high to 3,000 miles wide, high. We don't know for sure. Okay, so not definitely not 93 million no miles. no they're tiny and, um, they're, they're absolutely so tiny what what does this do for things like the theory of relativity d d determining the speed of light all that kind of stuff i mean you're you're throwing everything out not everything out you can still keep geometry and trigonometry calculus is going to be kind of tough and quantum mechanics. <laughs> we get to keep that <laughs> it, 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 quantum mechanics <laughs> and calculus they're, they're kind of tough uh, but, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying this is one of those things that, yes, if it, decide, if they, if it came out, and I do think it's going to come out eventually, uh, social media is just ramping up too much. Sure. Oh, crap, we're going to break, aren't we? Yeah, I'm sorry, that's Mark. Okay. It's a, we, you know, we got to make money. No, but no, man, no, it's okay. You are it's okay. saying so many interesting things, and I really genuinely appreciate this. We're, we're going to have Mark for one more segment, and if you've got questions, please ask 515-727-5842. This is FaithWorks Live, brought to you by Baldwin Heating and Plumbing, 515-371-4036. Now here's the host of FaithWorks Live, Michael Damasio. Agape Pregnancy Center has served people in the Des Moines metro area for over 30 years. They offer accurate information to help you make an informed choice. At Agape, what you have is a team of people who are going to listen to you. If you've got questions about pregnancy, abortion, STDs, you name it, they're going to sit down. And you need to know their services are 100% always free of charge because they know sometimes you just need someone to listen. And if you know somebody that needs this kind of help, this kind of care, send them to call and set up an appointment immediately 515-255-0243 that's 515-255-0243 my name's mike damastis and uh josh bingaman is here with me this is faith works live you're listening to us on 99.3 fm the truth it's theology thursday and we've gotten into a little bit of theology but this is just one heck of an interesting topic. I got to say that. And our yeah. guest today, Mark Sargent, is with us. And Mark, I genuinely appreciate uh, you just being willing to to come on and, and talk to us about this. And I mean, there's some things, to be honest with you, that you've said that I'm I'm just like, wow, what what did you just say? But it's it's cool to to hear uh, your position because it's 
it's not mine, and it's and it's hard for me to comprehend some of it. And uh, and I I appreciate you though being an advocate. I, what I want to know is mm-hmm. we got. By the way, I want people to jump in if they want to call, they want to text. Please do so. Not everybody's been able to get through, and just understand. Uh, we're trying the best that we can. We did get a text, uh, and they, here's a question for you, easy one, I probably assume. Okay. On a flat earth, how is it possible to walk completely around the South Pole? Ah, good one, which is how does anyone circumnavigate the South Pole or make an expedition? Well, okay, first off, nobody has walked around Antarctica. No one's even claimed to do it. The closest they've ever come is trying to cut across it. And two things. One, if you look at the map they take, you know, just just the map that mainstream science is showing, they take this shallow dog leg across the very shortest part, and it's almost nothing. But the other part is, and this is more interesting, which is, you got to remember, when it comes to navigation, everybody now relies on the GPS system, otherwise known as the Global Positioning System, which is the United States Department of Defense. It's a military system. We designed it in the mid-1990s to replace what was known as the Loran system, which was based basically just a ground radar system, which is, I think, what they're all they're doing now. Um, so in, by, if you wanted a better example of that, not just the South Pole, look at the airline flights, which is any airline flight, if it goes over water and it's not within 150 miles of any landmass, the latitude and longitude disappear. It goes into approximated or estimated mode and it stays off until you get within 150 miles of wherever their destination is, and then it pops back on. Until that point, you're kind of a no man's land. I mean, yeah, the pilots think they know approximately, hence the term, where they are, but they don't, which is how, by the way, you lost a 777, otherwise known as Malaysia. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and um, I, I have you brought up the airlines thing, so I want to bring uh, go down that road. This is a Google question. Yeah. Uh, I'm admitting this isn't my own question, but it's a Google question, yeah. and that is if the flat Earth is – real right then how can someone fly in 14 hours from santiago chile to sydney australia yeah excellent point uh and that and that good one because initially when i first did the clues i noticed that 95 and by the way this is not something that it should be taken lightly 95 percent of the flights in the southern hemisphere meaning from southern to southern meaning uh, africa to south america to australia they're all connection or double connections there's almost no non-stop flights however the one that was brought up santiago to uh sorry santiago to sydney mm-hmm. oh yeah. santiago to sydney uh as far as the distance goes not sure it's that we know there's something wrong with the map we know there's something wrong with the ae map because it on, on any flat earth model, it wouldn't be possible to do in 14 hours. Unless there were some severe tailwinds, which are very possible. I believe, you know, the jet stream is a real thing. The question is how... Every flight? I'm sorry, go ahead. Every flight? No, not every flight. So, don't know. Don't know, have an answer to that one yet. Okay, well, that's, I mean, that's good. And I, dude, you just earned, like, tons of respect to say, I don't know. That's a really good... Mm-hmm. Oh, know, sure, we don't, there's, there's all sorts of stuff we don't know. But, and so when, pe- but when people, there's so much that when you go to the when you try people that anyone that's in flat earth which is why again why we have such a massive retention rate when you try to go back to the globe there's way more loose ends on the globe side than there is on the flat side and let me let me get the statement out here which is can i prove to you right now that it's a flat earth no i can't but i can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat earth model and then once you're there uh, going, trying to go back to the globe is trying to look at, into an empty cardboard box and find something. There's nothing there. So I we got questions coming in that are that are hard, and I don't want to to get bogged down in in a ton of details. Sure. I, one of the things that's uh, to me as the host, just know this if you're listening. The host gets to ask the questions that are really interesting to him, and so um, I'm I'm interested in this. It's my my show. family all worked. I grew up in Florida. My my grandfather worked at NASA. My mom was part of the shuttle program. There we I, go. Uh, yep. I got a lot of family involved in the Kennedy Space Center, even to this day. Right. So talk to me about the flat Earth loathsome nature of NASA. Do, okay, do they hate NASA? Do they hate the people in NASA? No. Your family, and, and anyone that's listening here, because, you know, there's a couple degrees of separation, I'm sure, with some people. And that is, look, I my next door neighbor when I, when I was in Boulder was uh, Wayne Ottinger, who was like the garage mechanic at, at NASA. He knew all the astronauts on a, on a first name basis. He built the freaking LEM. 
and he knew nothing. So anyone that works at NASA right now that you know, they know nothing about nothing. They turn the wrenches, they polish things, they build the fuel systems, which is because why would you tell them anything? Look, you got to build real rockets and the rockets do have to launch and they do have to go somewhere. The only people that have to know that are in on the deception, I'm stealing from the Capricorn One movie, which is the telemetry guys. That's it. Those are the only guys, the guys that beam back the data that say, okay, here's where whatever spaceship is in the sky. That's the only guys that have to know. And everybody else doesn't have to know. But let me let me so, get this. And I know so right. you're saying, because just for people who aren't familiar, you're saying that NASA is not legitimate. They're, they're projecting a deception. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Look, NASA is DOD the entire way. They are uniquely military. People say, well, they wear white suits and they don't carry guns and they smile for the camera. They're not military. It's like, no, of course they're military. They were built on the still burning embers of the Nazi war machine. I mean, most of their scientists, Werner von Braun, I've got to throw this in there. I know we're running out of time. Werner von Braun, look up his headstone. It is fascinating. And because it, you think of this glorious man with a rocket pointing at the sky. Nope, it's just the year he was born, the year he died, and then it says Psalms 19.1. And it's like, I didn't know what Psalms 19. I had to look it up. And you know what 19.1 is? It says, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Why would the father of rocket science be talking about a domed structure above the world? Why? From his grave. Why would he? He never talked about it in real life. Why would we put that on his headstone? I thought that was fascinating. All right. I, I want to go to a text. We just we got um, we got a lot of texts coming in, but one uh, that's kind of kind of interesting. Just to a answer this one for me, is sure. it po or just address it? Yeah. Is it possible that the Earth is neither flat nor round, uh, with the land being on the outside? But imagine it being round like a ball, but the land would be. On the yeah, he's talking about what's known in st the Star Trek world as a Dyson sphere. Uh, nah, no, because eventually you'd see the land sloping up and you would be able to look straight up with a big enough telescope and you'd be able to see oh. land. No, it's okay. No. So you, you, you would reject that? No, that no, yeah. no, well. no, no. Okay, uh, what about satellites? Explain satellites. Satellites I mean, are real, but do they go up on rockets? No. Look up something called High Altitude Balloon Program by NASA. It's, they're not shy about showing people this. Most of the satellites they put up are using hydrogen or helium balloons. Hydrogen has double the lift. And they can lift with hydrogen balloons um, satellites up to four tons, 8,000 pounds. And when they wreck, it's, it's spectacular. So what's up there? Is there satellites? Yes, I do believe there's satellites. Do I think they go up on rockets no i do not okay so uh one one last thing for me any with like, his shuttles up there it's not orbiting what is it doing Oh, the ISS? The ISS isn't doing anything up there. By the way, the shuttle program was shut down quietly years ago. The ISS, look up something in the ISS interior. ISS hairspray. Look up ISS CGI. Uh, ISS wires. ISS cables. The production value on the inside of the ISS is terrible. They are not anywhere. They are just, they're in a studio somewhere. You've got to watch the video. Just The ISS hairspray alone should convince most people. Oh, Okay. Uh, Mark Sargent, uh, dude, I want to probably have you back on one of these days because uh, this was <laughs> incredible to me. I, <laughs> I genuinely appreciate you, your worldview, your heart, man. You got a passion. Well, thank you. And that's something that uh, that's something that more people need on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, whether it's flat or round, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's something that more people need. Thank you for sharing your worldview. Thank you for just giving us some of your time today to talk about this. And I know. That I've got because I've been getting like personal texts and all that kind of stuff. People are like, "What is he saying?" <laughs> so uh, it's I know it's hard for people to listen to. So this won't be a one and done. You you would you be willing to come back on and talk to us? Absolutely. Again? And if and people want to have questions in the meantime, just have them Google Flat Earth Clues. You will find me. Flat Earth Clues. Okay. Well, Mark, thank you again so much for uh, giving us some of your time. Thanks very much for having me. Take care and God bless. All right. Bye bye.